Well, Sunshine, what we did today, we're testing this adjustable iron horse pipe and doing uh, an adjustable stinger on it. We also moved the air cushion just a little bit. Got some real neat stuff to show you. I'm taking this off so I can show you that. Uh, in the meantime, went ahead and did a test cut or two with it. We'll show you that right here. Okay, guys, same bar, same chain, same saw, same shirt, same gallon of gas, uh, same day, same socks, different underwear. Uh, <laughs> the 3a7 on there guys um she'll chooch why wow, she'll cut her so thin you got to use carbon paper to throw them in the stove and we got one side to them uh we've done some dyno runs maybe it's about time to show an old dyno run of where we're at versus where we started from never hurts to remember where we come from stock aftermarket big bore we is at 2.96 peak horsepower down here at 9406 rpms we're up to 4.6 horsepower at 10,467. So we've gained over a thousand RPMs and over, uh, for quick dirty math, round this up to three and that down to four and a half, we've gained 50% increase in horsepower and a thousand RPMs. So that ain't too shabby. We gained right at 0.9, I guess it'd be exactly 0.9 foot pounds of torque so we gained almost 50% of torque too. So we're, we're on the right path. We've done quite a bit to this saw. All of them little gains, but boy, they sure add up, don't they? Maybe try to show a test cut of where we're at from approximate where we started from. I don't know how old I got test cuts, but we'll see what we can do there. It's probably time for a test cut or two on the old uh, Steel 026 we've been working on. Same log, same chain, same bar, same saw, same gas. Uh, same day, same clothes. Uh, hmm, what else can I lie to you about? Ah, oh, that's about it. Let's, let's run a cut down through this log. See if we're gaining anything over, uh, see if we're gaining anything over where we was at just shortly after stock. Chain's cut pretty good. Um, that's 3A7 pin. Uh, old dead dry oak. She wants split out bad. Uh, I want to show you some neat stuff inside this iron horse pipe. And I want to give you a quick talking. Give you a talking to. Yeah, I'm going to give you a quick talking to about that. Um, one of the first things I want to get out of the way. And, of course, we call this an iron horse pipe because, well, that's who gets credit for making uh, it, and, it, and they don't normally look like this. I made this in here to where it's adjustable if you guys missed the other video. Iron Horse, old Harvey, he, he designed this pipe not necessarily thinking it was the best or not saying you can't build something better. But he's, he's a guy that wants us all to work on our own saws, right? He wants to show us stuff. 
and this pipe's no exception to that rule. He built a pipe or designed a pipe or whatever that worked that basically anybody with just a modicum of tools can build. If you got a welder and a little bit of patience um, or torch and brazen or whatever, if you can glue a couple, pe if you can glue two pieces of pipe together and cut out a flange and glue that on there, you can build one. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's a little bit. You got to get that angle right so it'll fit in here. Uh, you don't want it sticking out here too far where you can't work with it. But, yeah, uh, and he's told us some general guidelines for how to build it for a 70cc saw. We all know that. He don't, I don't think he'd want a saw like this unless he is to use it for a keychain, a little bitty thing, um, or trimming his rose bushes maybe. Uh, so he give you guidelines for a 70cc saw. <clears throat> and of course, what we're trying to do here is run them on a dyno and see where we can get some power at. And there's some kind of some neat things happening here. And I'm gonna take some pictures here uh we get a real neat wash pattern and as i move this stinger it's changing the wash pattern inside this pipe um i'll pull you guys some pictures here and put them up here uh it's quite neat uh we're keeping uh we're pulling a little bit of fuel out into this what we're doing is this here's pulling a little bit of a siphon and it's pulling a little bit of fuel air mixture out into this pipe for it to be rebounded back in now you don't want too much and i will tell you this saw ran rich with this pipe i had to lean it out so it worked good right it actually pulled just it pulled some of that air charge like a big tuned expansion chamber type pipe not near as good i'm not saying it did but in the same manner it pulled some of that fuel air out into this pipe and i'll show you that and as we change the length of this uh it changed changed how far we was pulling this fuel out conversely if on the same token when we changed this uh length from the end of this pipe to here the pipes inside of here as we change that air cushion area from uh, as we change that air cushion area more and less that also affected how much of a bounce back and how much of a pushback we got and you can get too much uh, there's a lot to be said for reducing the volume of what comes out of here and forcing it out so that basically you got very little exhaust if you got a great big old can it's, it's full of exhaust and got a little bit of intake coming out of it and you can't keep it all lined up in a row uh, you get you get this to where it'll force that exhaust out yeah we probably got a little bit more back pressure than what's optimum but the gains of having that more back pressure is the fact that we ain't getting this fuel and air charge so mixed up your sonic waves will go through that hotter gas and push that cooler denser air charge back in better we don't have that luxury in a small pipe on a big tune pipe hangs out back sure we can do that on a small pipe i don't like thinking about it as sonic waves i like thinking about it as uh basically just air where it's going in there and this cushion this cushion directs that at a certain time after this here uh basically pulls a void inside this pipe maybe all the way inside to the cylinder because it's pulling fuel out the different length of the pipe you get it too short and it just goes away um so we're pulling just a little bit of fuel out. We adjust this in and out on the dyno, of course, but it was neat for me to pull that apart and see just how much I was pulling out. Now, theoretically, maybe without a pipe or without a dyno, a guy could read his pipe and decide, hey, I want a little bit longer stinger, a little bit shorter stinger. So what we did, we took us a long pipe. It was so long, uh, just about as long as you could use on the saw. And we put it in here and of course it stuck out to about here and we just started cutting it off about 300 thousandths about a quarter inch a little little over a little less uh wasn't uh exactly technical just held it in my vice grips cut it off with a cut off wheel but we took a measurement each time it appears on this saw at least that you lose power faster as the pipe gets shorter um beyond just your regular uh the right length if you get a little bit longer 
you don't seem to lose power as fast. You can make it a half inch longer and not lose near as much power than if you made it a half inch shorter. Uh, and I will tell you, I'll try to, I'll try to remember to put it up here somewhere. Uh, there's another video where I was finding the right length of this tube uh, with a heat gun, and I did, and it turned out to be just right there again. Um, just cut it off just past the hot spot, about about a quarter inch past the hot spot. Um, <laughs> funny, I was talking to Iron Horse. He he done the same thing, but without a heat gun, he found that length too. Um, so guys, anything I'm ever telling you ain't nothing new under the sun. I'm just testing stuff and, and trying to quantify it on dyno and things like that. Now don't let this dyno chart here screw with you too bad. We're, we're not going to look at it. I just wanted to show you what kind of what I went through. There's six different dyno runs and I didn't go through and color code everything, match them like I usually do because we're not going to look at this. There's just, just too many results here. And to be honest about it, like I said, we're, we're gaining little stuff. Uh, you can't hardly tell them apart. They just look about like spaghetti. So let me roll down. Since we're dealing with a, such a small, a small fraction, I wanted to be able to show you this. Now them lines aren't very smooth because we're zoomed in so far. They're essentially kind of like being pixelated. Um, we're just hitting a range from 7,500 RPMs up to 11,750. And our horsepower range on this particular chart is only showing from four to 4.6. But what I wanted to show you, <clears throat> the very longest pipe I did, and there's a little dip in this one here, probably uh, operator error where it picked up, uh, where the refresh rate was on the tack and the scale. It showed a little bit low, but I never mess with those. I get what I get. Um, I can make this look better but it i'd just be lying to myself I ain't into that so uh when they show up like this that's just how they, that's how they come out blue line is the longest stinger which was 3.475 and we hit a max horsepower of 4.56 at 10,209 rpms which isn't too bad now the red line even though it looks different and it is different just if a guy was to only look at the dyno numbers, you'd think, well, shucks, there wasn't much of a difference there, right? Because we only gained four hundredths of a horsepower. We went from 4.56 to 4.60, which isn't much, and we gained 250 RPMs, right? But look how we flattened that out. And we gained the whole time, all except for this little anomaly right here, but we gained this whole time. Okay. So while I said you lose horsepower slower by having a longer pipe, the correct length of pipe really flattens this curve out plus gets you the most horsepower. Uh, now the shortest pipe, yeah, we kind of lost eh, most of the way through there, all the way up into your cutting range. We was above actually the longer pipe once you got down. It's actually pretty flat. It's substantially similar to the one that's pretty long but the real long one, it pulls some RPMs, but it don't seem to torque out flat like, uh, like getting them to the correct length. So uh, there's, there's our best length, 2.43 inches total length. That got us 4.6 horsepower at 10,467 RPMs. Now the, we range from four, I'm gonna run you back up this other chart. We, the shortest pipe was 4.44 at 9570. A little bit longer, we gained some horsepower and gained some speed, 4.51 at 9669. Then we got up here to the right length and man, it really jumped. And, and you can see that's only about 300 thousandths difference, 2.125 length versus 2.430 length. We gained 800 RPMs and a tenth of a horsepower of torque right there. That's the sweet spot. And then we climbed it up a little bit more and we, and the horsepower kind of held in pretty similar, but we started dropping RPMs with each one of those. Um, and the same way with the torque, we started dropping torque and torque RPMs, 2.73 here, 2.78 here. And our sweet spot was 2.87. So guys, I'm trying not to bore you with all the stuff that goes in that. Suffice it to say, if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. 
um, but I know how boring this can get. So suffice it to say, uh, three quarters of an inch or an inch longer uh, was a decrease in horsepower of not much and a couple hundred RPMs, but only three quarters of an inch too short was a decrease in horsepower of uh, 0.15 horsepower, give or take, and lost about a thousand RPM. So what a caution you is, uh, longer is better than shorter on these. We're starting to see a pattern here on our cut factor. I've got these auto arranged by cut factor. The last video we had the short cushion and the long cushion uh, with the long cushion with a short pipe and just a long cushion and then the shorter cushion. These here tests here, these six, were actually on a shorter cushion than those three. So I lost a little bit, I'm feeling on the cushion. I need to adjust that pipe back down and put that longer cushion in and I think we'll beat this. But what I'm looking at here on my cut factor, um, iron horse pipe with a short cushion and the original stinger, which was pretty long, um, we lost another 300 RPMs, but we picked up some we picked up some horsepower. Uh, so I think you guys, if you don't have a dyno, and and I get most of us don't, um, I think a guy needs to get ready to learn to read that pipe, like I showed you in those earlier things, because um, we're just gaining up hundreds hundredths here, um, and I think a guy could gain that by paying attention to reading on his pipe just like he would reading on his uh, spark plug. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It'll be kind of short. If I earned it, give her the old hitchhiker there. If I didn't, give her the old Julius Caesar. Um, consider subscribing if you want. We got some new, we got some stuff coming up. We got to pull the top off that cylinder. That'll probably be next because we adjusted the top of that piston to get us a better burn and we did get a better burn as a matter of fact i've tested a couple more things since this video and uh that better burn changed more than just the burn i haven't took the cylinder off to look at the burn but we've changed some more stuff that if i'd thought about it long enough it should have changed it but i never gave it a thought um we got a carburetor and air filter uh kind of built to to mod this out over factory because like i say the factory air cleaner is just kind of crud on them um, i want to try something else here see if we can gain a little bit of horsepower there and uh guys we're always just messing around we're probably to about the end of this saw getting ready to pull up something else i'm thinking a 361 or an ms 440 and i'm leaning towards like a 361 i don't want to go don't want to go with strato saw let me know what you guys would like me to see build next um, for just basically a test mule uh, that just stays. Yeah, we can cut wood with it, but it's going to be a test mule for this bench to just try just one thing after another. Ruin cases if that's what we need to do. Um, play with crankshafts, uh, cylinders, offset like we did on this one. Uh, just the multitude of things we're learning. And... Uh, let me know. I'm 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 venturing towards a MS, like I say, like a 361 clone saw, uh, just because it's a little bit smaller than like a 440. Uh, and I've got a 440 anyway. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. So, guys, appreciate her. Uh, see you on the next one.